I'm going in. I'm going down. Six feet, that's all it takes. It's more than he'll get. I'm getting ahead of myself. Again. I'd like to begin. I don't know where to start. I should start with the wall. It's been there forever. They helped me get it started. And then they left me alone, sitting in its shadow, feeling its weight. The wall started to lean my way once when I was 12. I stood up, pressed my back against it. Been that way ever since. Wall gets heavier sometimes. Occasionally it lightens up, not often. When it gets to be more than I can handle, the dreams come. The dreams started last fall when he told me that I don't exist. You see, there was love before I was 12. I felt it. I tried to give it back. The Catholic Jesus says it was all a mistake. Look here, he says. That was then and this is now. You know what I mean, son? I told him he was the boss. That isn't what the born again Jesus says at all. Born again Jesus says, but I'll always exist in the eyes of God, as long as I spend my waking hours praising his name. I told them both that they were fucked. They said, till death do us part. Not me. Weren't you paying attention? I'm rambling. Dreams can because I climbed the wall. Big mistake. Looked over the wall, saw a hatred so terrible it made my eyes bleed. Without me, there to hold it, the wall came crashing down, and I faced the hatred. Hatred gave me the dreams, didn't ask for them, but when he gave them to me, the wall went back up again, and I was alone, again, alone with the dreams. There was a problem. I didn't think it would start like this. He died before I could ask. I did ask, but he didn't answer. Lost Petey the same way. The disease, self-inflicted escape. But they didn't do it alone. No, it's never alone. There was always a source. He wouldn't tell me, too scared to speak. Thought maybe he was protecting someone, but he wasn't. Walked a long way before I got far enough. A shallow grave. Would have to do. Pile up enough earth to discourage the animals. Works out here. You can never bury yourself deep enough to hide from the animals in the clean white coats. This one had a roommate. Pre-med students. I think they'd have more sense. I think they'd be able to recognize things for what they were. They're just as susceptible as the rest. And once it pulls them in, they don't know when to quit. They never know when to quit. The day started right, but it didn't last. I snagged the roommate right off his early morning job. Ten minutes later, the car came shuddering to a stop like it had malaria. Something was wrong with this one. I felt his fear that there was something else. Innocence, maybe. I wasn't sure, and that should have been enough. But it wasn't. He knew what I was after started babbling about a streetwalker they had scored with. But I had to get him out of sight. And now there was this. Escape. But the innocent don't escape. They have faith. The diseased escape. Spreading their sickness before them as they run.
What they don't realize is there is no escape. Ever wonder why they run and they run, but they can't ever escape? Used to piss me off. Old Jason Voorhees never ran after anyone, but he always caught up in time for the end. It's about control and the inevitable. Let the fear drive you and it will drag you down. It lulls your senses, cons you into complacency when all the while death is bearing down on you. Steady. Relentless. Time to read between the white lines, my friend. Thank <laughs> you.